Hello people, Mongoose here again and it's time for another Retro Video Game Review so I thought I'd just stick to what I know and stick to some NES and it's going to be Gremlins 2 the new batch on NES and yeah what else can I say about it in this intro it's a Sunsoft game so you know it's up there with um, the Batman game and Blaster Master I mean Sunsoft were legendary for making great NES titles and this is no exception and it's one of my favourites so I thought hey why not just review it so I am um, it was released in 1990 over in Japan and North America didn't find its way over here until 1991 nearly a year after the Japanese release I'm not sure why that was but you know at the end of the day we've got a brilliant game out of it so yeah let's crack on and then uh, see what we think of it Right, so here we are with um, Gremlins 2 The New Batch on NES, and as you can see straight away it's a really nice looking game. Now um, what you're going to be tasked with is navigating Gizmo through the, the different levels in the clamp building um, to find, you know, the the hive of all the, all the other Gremlins and stop them escaping into the city. So, you know, right off the bat it's, it follows the movie, you know, quite closely, which for an NES title is quite a big thing, I mean lots of games didn't, you know, Back to the Future and such like, and um, there's a lot of NES titles that were very loose with the with the movie licenses that they ticked up, but I mean this one's very faithful to the, to the movie, I kind of fault it for that. Now reaching your goal is split into nine levels and every other level kind of like represents a different um, floor on the on the clamp building so you know you'll progressively be you know climbing climbing the building that's the idea to get to the like I said to get to the gremlin hive that's at the top so you can stop them you know escaping into New York City but um, it always bothered me you know why is it always New York City like if, if I'm gonna live somewhere on the earth it's definitely not gonna be New York City because if anything's gonna happen there alien invasion natural disaster the world's going to end, the epicenter's going to be New York, uh, New York City, so, you know, it's not a place I'd like to live, but I'm quite happy to help out, help out um, with that gremlin extermination problem. <laughs> now, navigating your way through these levels isn't easy, there's a, there's a lot of gremlin foes, you know, to deal with, or, you know, mice and bombs that explode and see a bomb, but, um, you know, you, you're aided along the way with, you know, lots of weapons. I think I've got, like, some kind of match that creates fire here. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, there's a number of different weapons, and the power-ups are really interested, and I'll talk about them in a minute. But, you know, yeah, there's a nice range of enemies and a pogo stick. Basically, you can stomp on enemies with the pogo stick. I didn't really utilise it too well there. So you know you get the um, shop sequences too where you know you can buy health and power ups and such like but you know there's another familiar face in the old man um, who Gizmo belongs to so you know it's still in keeping with the movie and stuff which is always you know it's a really nice touch. Yeah so a lot of the game you know you're not actually battling enemies you're actually you know platforming it's a major part of the game so it's handled really, really well, and whether you be, you know, jumping short distances like this, or you know, entering um, on the moving platforms to move the further distances, you know, you're always challenged um, as far as the platform goes. Um, with your classic eight-bit rotating, oh, rotating spike ball there. But obviously, you know, you've got the you've got this great power up in the balloon, which is always helpful to just to help you out for the more difficult gaps. And that's another great part of the game, you know, the power ups. Um, Especially the balloon, you know, you can you can float right on past some enemies if they're a little bit too difficult for you. Yeah, so I mean, overall, that's um, Gremlins 2, the new batch. That's what you're going to be tasked with. Um, a lot of, you know, battling, battling and uh, Gremlin foes and um, platforming, which you know gets very challenging in the later stages. But you know, the um, I think the difficulty curves really, you know, slope really well. It's not just instant extreme difficulty you know builds it up really really nice and um, it's just a really fun game to play and um, the music's absolutely brilliant as well I mean you'll notice in the different levels that I played and um, some of the darker levels the music's really eerie whereas um, you know on these these levels where there's a bit more light it seems to be a bit more you know light and bouncy music and 
Yeah, I think it just captures the whole Gremlins um, universe very, very well and the movie very, very well. And like I said before, that was a rare thing on NES. Usually movie tie-in games were absolutely terrible, but Gremlins seems to avoid avoided that fate. I mean, and like I said, with the power-ups here, I mean, you can see this guy blowing fire, you can think, how am I going to get over there? What you can do is just use your balloon, and it'll even get you over this gap. And you see how you can just, you know, strategically be be using your, um, your different power-ups and like you know I mentioned um, you get the you get the shop levels as well where you can buy them or you know make them a little bit more powerful and stuff and it's yeah it's a really polished game so that's Gremlins 2 the new batch on NES and like I say it's a really good game and I have a lot of fond memories of playing it as a kid and you know spend a lot of time on it and um, it still stands up to date. I really enjoy playing it today and um, it sets itself apart by being you know a NES title movie tie-in that's actually really good you know the NES was notorious for having bad ones I've already mentioned but yeah this is really good and like I mentioned it sticks really close to the um, to the plot of the movie which was another rarity on um, NES movie tie-in games but um, I mean also you know just the general gameplay it's, it's top notch and you wouldn't expect anything less from Sunsoft um, they had a golden reputation on NES and everything they touched did seem to turn to gold I mentioned Batman and Blaster Master I mean there's you know there's others um, but yeah they were just a really good company putting out really good games and Gremlins 2 the new batch is definitely up there it's reasonably cheap you could well I mean what I consider cheap and what you consider cheap might be different things but you can pick it up for under a tenner it's not going to break the bank and it's definitely worth you know owning especially if you're an NES collector but just owning if you like um, you know if you like platforming games and um, you know just generally fun video games you know if you're a Gremlins 2 fan if you like the movie series like I do then you know it's an added bonus but yeah it's absolutely brilliant I mean what else can I say about it um, the cutscenes were absolutely amazing too which like I said before is just so you know in keeping with the movie and just how it follows the story of the movie is just you know a testament to it you know it's not often on NES I know I've said this a lot of times but there's so many bad movie tie-ins on NES and if this is not you know the best one I'd challenge someone to tell us you know a movie tie-in game on NES that is better than Gremlins 2 the new batch so you know I'm the mongoose and I'm going to say like I always do thanks for watching and yeah that's pretty much it so thanks very much and please subscribe <laughs>